Hello, and I hope everyone's doing well. So far, we have had a look at glaciated land uses and glaciated land use conflicts. Today, we're going to have a look at the solutions to these land use conflicts. But first, a wee reminder and a bit of a recap while giving us a hint about what's ahead. Just to watch out, there's a gory bit at 1 minute 33 seconds if you're squeamish, you might want to close your eyes. So that is what we're looking at today, that end bit, the land use conflict solutions. So today we're going to hopefully have a better idea about what a national park is and what a national park does and give some examples of the solutions to conflicts which we looked at in the previous lesson. So first task. On the next slide, there is an information about the Cairngorm National Park. Pause the slide and read it through. Take notes of the three to five most important points about the purpose of any national park. And specifically, take down one key fact about the Cairngorm National Park itself. There is no right or wrong answer to this, but will help develop your skills at recognising important information. I've added my five key facts into the slide. How did yours match up? So, read this through and take down some notes of what you think are the key points. You do not have to hear everything. There should only be three to five points after you're finished. Pause the video here and take down your notes about what a national park is and what its purpose is. Let's have a look at the five important things I've highlighted. First up is a national park as a place of outstanding natural beauty that the government has decided should be protected. The next point is actually one about the Cairngorms itself. So this is my Cairngorms fact, that Cairngorms is Britain's largest national park. 
My next point is the tip at the side. The aims of Scotland's national parks are designed to balance land use and conservation. Before anything else, that is their first and foremost aim specific to Scotland's national parks. My third point is the aim of the national park is to conserve the natural habitat of landscapes, plants and animals. You don't need that extra part in there if you remember what a natural habitat is. The fourth point I've picked is that this happens whilst encouraging sustainable development. It's not there to stop people building, but it's there to encourage it in a sensible way. Also, if we then look over to the left, my fifth point is to protect and enhance the cultural heritage of an area. So somewhere like Wales or the Lake District might have a very important cultural heritage that it wants to protect and promote. The National Park will aim to assist with this. I have added in another one that to promote public understanding and enjoyment is also key work that the National Park does. So I've got six with one key fact about the Cairngorms. How did yours match up? Now, let's have a look at some of the specific National Park solutions they put in place for land use conflicts. So the Cairngorms National Park was produced to help ensure sustainable use and conservation. Copy in these notes below into your, whatever you're taking notes about how they help reduce conflict. So planning permission. They turn down any scheme that will cause conflict between tourists and locals. So they will not allow big industrial factories or retail units to be built there and will only allow things that are in keeping with the natural environment. Sometimes these can be shielded behind trees or in forested areas where they're not visible from anywhere else unless you're standing in front of the building. To reduce traffic congestion, they try to reduce traffic, introduce traffic management, such as one-way systems, pedestrianisation, or large accessible car parking that means they don't park inside the town. One of the most important things National Park does is it tries to educate people. So information centres are there to educate and inform people on looking after the environment and about any activities that are going on during the National Park that day. Zoning, these are putting conflicting tourist activities in different areas. So such as fishing and jet skis, they might put them in different locks or different parts of a lock so that they don't annoy each other. Housing control restricts numbers of outsiders buying up property such as second homes and makes housing available only for locals or people who are going to live there permanently. Second housing is a real danger because if you only have someone living there for two or three months out of the year, they are not using local services such as shops, restaurants, doctor surgeries or pharmacies. These sources will then close down because they don't have enough business and it makes it really difficult for locals to then use them. And finally, a national park solution is conservation. It reduces footpath erosion, repairs walls, fences off tree planting areas and is one of the most important jobs a national park will do. So pause the video here until you've got these noted down and then carry on with the video. Now, a random solution. This isn't a Cairngorms, but is one very typical of a Cairngorm car park in the summer. How would you solve this problem? Would you put more bins out? Would you have a bigger bin there? Or, as the Cairngorms have done, they have actually removed rubbish bins. If you remove bins, it means that people are more likely to take them home. With a bit of encouragement as well, this also works. When people take the rubbish home, they're more likely to recycle it and it saves the Cairngorms a lot of money. As we said earlier, it is the largest national park in the UK. Imagine having a va van to go around and empty all those bins on a daily basis, especially in the summer when it is very busy. It will cost a lot of money. So, our final task for the day. On the next two slides, there are 10 problems and solutions. Copy these into your jotters and match up the solutions to the problems. Or, if you're doing this on a computer or some laptops, well, all laptops, computer, laptop and some tablets, you can go to the comments below where you can find a link to the worksheet. So, the first one is farmers versus tourists. Down the left hand side we have our conflicts and down the right we have our solutions. Pause the video here and match them up, rewriting them into your notes in the right heads to tails. Our second conflict is locals versus tourists. The same as before, conflicts are down the left with a random selection of solutions down the right. Rewrite these into your notes and match them up in the correct way. 
If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also find a link to the answer sheet in the video description, but please make sure you try the work first before just checking the answers, as it doesn't really help you learn. But that should hopefully give you a better idea about what a national park's job is and does. It will hopefully give you an idea of some examples of solutions to conflicts brought about by land users. That's it for this lesson. If you haven't seen parts one or two where we actually talk about the different land uses and the conflicts, go and check them out. That's it for this National Geography series in Glaciated Upland Land Uses. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. But until the next topic, bye!